you find your place in Matthew 26, if you would stand as we look into the Word of God, I'm going to begin reading in verse number 36, and we're going to read about 10 verses here or so as the good Lord would lead. Notice in Matthew 26, 36, the Bible says, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I... I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter, What could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doeth betray me. Father in heaven, we thank you for the reading of your word. We ask God for a touch from above tonight. Bless this word as it goes forth. Open eyes and open hearts to receive it, God, and we'll praise you and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated tonight. Thank you for standing. Talk a little bit tonight. I guess the message tonight is about commitment. Commitment. Uh, you know, we read about our Lord Jesus Christ here tonight praying in the garden. And we see a picture, I believe, of commitment. Truly, Christ was committed. He was committed to do the will of the Father. The passage that we read tonight tells us of the uh, last night before our Lord and Savior was crucified. Uh, and went to that cross of Calvary and laid his life down. He spent his last hours of freedom right here, right here in the Garden of Gethsemane, his last hours of freedom, praying to his heavenly Father. Now think about that. That's commitment. Would you agree with that tonight? Yes, That's a model of commitment that we have uh, as our Savior has laid it out for us. Uh, his last night here, he spent it praying. This was uh, a terrible night. Uh, you know, I can't imagine what this must have been like. An awful night for the Lord Jesus Christ as He saw this cup of sin. Uh, and He knew that He was uh, going to have to go to the cross and die for the, the wickedness and the sin of mankind. And, uh, you know, He knew what lie ahead of Him. And, you know, I believe as we look at this passage of Scripture tonight that there's a few things that we can learn from this. The primary thing that I believe we need to see is what we just stated, the commitment of Jesus Christ. Uh, he was dedicated. He, he said in another place in the Word of God, I came not uh, to do the I came to, to do the will of him that sent me. I came uh, you know, not to do my own will. Uh, but my need is to do the will of him that sent me. He told his disciples they were all gathered around eating one night, and that's what he said. You've got your meat. My need is to do the will of him that sent me, and he fulfilled it. He was committed to doing the Father's will. Whatever the cost. Right. And this is the model that Christ has laid out for us. We need to be committed to doing God's will no matter what the cost. That's what Jesus did. And we are followers of Jesus, so we see this example here. you know. But in a lot of places today, in a lot of churches, commitment is a dirty word. They don't want to hear anything about commitment. They don't want to be dedicated. They, they don't want to, uh, you know, uh, commit their time to serve in any uh, capacity whatsoever. But folks seem like they're content just to come and sit on a church pew and listen to the singing and the preaching and go home and there's no commitment uh, there. But I want you to think about this tonight. Uh, if you're saved by the grace of God, somebody in your life had to be committed. 
Somebody in your life had to be committed to give you the gospel. It might have been a preacher. It might have been a pastor. It might have been a Sunday school teacher. It might have been a prayer warrior. Whoever it was, somebody had to be committed or you wouldn't be sitting in the house of God saved tonight. Amen. So we're talking about commitment. Jesus was committed. We need to be committed. But a lot of folks just don't like to hear the word today. But the question is tonight, are you willing to, to be committed and, and to be used like this? Because we can learn a lot from the last night of our Lord Jesus Christ here on earth about commitment and His requirements and what it takes. So let's look at a couple of these. First of all, when we look at the life of Jesus Christ, we can see that if you're going to be committed, it's going to take a lot of prayer. Christ was praying here. Look at verse number 39. He says, and he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. So Christ was down on his face before the Father in prayer. He was not just saying a little repeat after me prayer. He was not just mumbling words. This was a heartfelt, genuine, earnest prayer that our Savior prayed to His Heavenly Father. He was committed, and His commitment needed a clear and open line with God. That's what you need tonight. That's what I need tonight. We need a clear and an open line with God that we might pray and be committed. So if we're going to be committed to God, we've got to seek God. We've got to come before Him in prayer. We've got to do as Jesus did here in Matthew chapter 26. And your prayer needs to be persistent. Not just once every two or three days. Not just one or two times a week. Not just when you have a meal, uh, you know, or from time to time, or when you wake up, or before you go to bed. It needs to be persistent prayer. We are told that Jesus prayed here three times. He prayed until uh, He was assured that He knew the Father's will. And He had this concept in grasp. So throughout the Word of God, we consistently see that Jesus told His disciples to pray. Jesus prayed Himself. He was committed, and that required a lot of time in, in dialogue, in, in, in uh, prayer with His Father. This type of commitment did. So a commitment to God is going to require you to be a persistent person who goes to God in prayer. If, you, if you're going to be committed, it can't be any other way. What, what would it have been like if Jesus would have just come, fell down here and a few words and got up and went on about the night? That's not the model that we see before us here in the Word of God. We see a, a Savior who is committed and persistent in prayer. That's what God requires. If we are uh, committed to doing God's will, we've got to be continuously guided by God. We've got to be following God. We've got to be following His Word and obeying His Word. And this is very simply going to require a lot of prayer. Amen? It will require a lot of prayer. It also requires some submission. You've got to be submissive to the Father's will. Verse 39 again says, He went a little farther and fell on His face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as Thou wilt. He was willing to submit to His Father's will. Not my will, God, but Thine be done. That's what we need to do today. Jesus prayed, Lord, let this cup pass for me if it be possible, but the cup and the cross could not be separated. There was no separation between the cup and the cross. If Jesus drank the cup, that meant going to the cross. If He bypassed the cup, He bypassed the cross. There was no separation here. But he said, Lord, I, I see this and I know that this uh, it is the destiny. This is the cup that's coming my way. And I, I see this, but nevertheless, not my will be done, God, but yours be done. Amen. A commitment to God is going to require us to be submitted to His will and not our will. Too many people today are looking for their own will to be done, but your will needs to be in line with God's will. We need to put our will aside and go with God's will. They actually need to be coinciding with one another. If your will isn't coinciding with God, then back up to the previous point, maybe we need to spend some more time in prayer right. that God will bring it in line. 
as Jesus has laid it out for us here. A commitment to God requires you to be submitted to His will. If you want God's will to be done in your life, you've got to be committed to Him and, and He's got to completely rule your life. The Lord cannot just be the Lord of your life one or two days a week. He's got to be the King and the Lord of your life 24-7, 7, seven days a week, three hundred every moment of every day. You see, that's the way it needs to be. We can't be totally committed until that's the reality. We can't be totally committed until we are submitted to Him. So, we need to be submitted to God's plan. I hope you know, how many know that God has a plan for your life? God has a purpose for your life. He's got a plan. This is not just all happening by chance. We are all here for a reason and for a purpose. God has a plan for each and every individual hearing this message tonight. Yes. Father's plan for Jesus was for Him to go to the cross and die that we might have our sins forgiven. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, to some people, that may sound like a terrible plan. But we know what was accomplished by this plan. We know what happened in the end of this. We know that our atonement was made. We know that our sacrifice was made. That our salvation was delivered to us when Christ finished the work on the cross. Now, we know this. So, when we think about God's plan for our lives... It may not make a lot of sense. Some people look at Jesus going to the cross and they say, that don't make any sense. That, sound, that sounds like a terrible plan. Well, it's the same way with your life. Sometimes God's plan for you may not make a lot of sense, but if you'll follow God's plan to the end, you're going to see something wonderful come out of it. To the person who's committed and submitted to God and who's trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ day by day, there's going to be a reward. You're going to be rewarded at the end of this. Amen? Amen. I'm glad that we're not doomed to die and go to hell, aren't you? Yes. But if we're saved by the grace of God, hell, hell's not going to be my home tonight. I'm not going. I'm going somewhere else. I'm going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a reward coming. Amen. For those who trust God and follow Him. For those who have obeyed and, and are committed and have submitted to His plan, there's a reward for you at the end of this road. So we see in verse number 46, take a look at verse number 46. If you're going to be committed to God, it's going to require some action on your part. It says, Rise, let us be going. Behold, He is at hand that doeth betray me. But particularly, look at the part that says, Rise, let us be going. That denotes some action there. There's some action that's taking place. Even if we're acting alone, the disciples let Jesus Christ down here. You see, they fell. They fell down on the job. They went to sleep. They were supposed to stay awake. They were supposed to watch and pray. But they let down on the job. They let the Lord down. Judas turned on them. Judas betrayed Him in the Bible. Nobody but Jesus could fulfill God's plan. These disciples couldn't do it. They couldn't even stay awake and pray. Judas couldn't do it. He was, he was the betrayer. But it took Jesus to fulfill the plan of this great sacrifice. Nobody could do this but Jesus. So when we make a commitment to God, people are going to let us down. Christ was committed to go to the cross. Father, not my will, but thine be done. And the disciples let Him down. When you make a commitment to God, you can rest assured somewhere along the way somebody's going to let you down. Amen. Others will do all they can to see us fail sometimes. You know, it's sad that there's people like that. Yeah. I'm glad that I don't think any of them are in this building tonight. But you know as well as I do, there's people out there that would love nothing more than to see you fall on your face. Yes. Have you ever met anybody like that? Yes. God has a plan for us. God's plan is not going to be stopped by any man, woman, or, or anybody in this world. That's God's plan. Man's not going to be able to stand in the way of God's plan. Who is man that he's stronger than God? You can't do it. So we just need to move forward with the Lord tonight and follow Him every day of our life. We 
can't do God's will until we start. <clears throat> Jesus spent a lot of time in prayer. We see that when we look at passages such as Matthew chapter 26 here in the Word of God. But there came a time when he had to get up from praying and get going. You see, he couldn't just stay in the garden and pray. He had to get up and get moving. He had to move toward the cross. He had to go and finish the work that the Father gave him to do, and he did. He didn't just stay in the garden and pray. There's going to come a time in your life, my dear friend, when you're going to have to get up and take some action. You can't just hang out in the garden forever. God's plan wasn't finished in Gethsemane. And Jesus knew that. Your plan's not finished sitting in here on these pews tonight. No, Jesus had to get up from the garden and go to the cross. We need to get up from these pews when this service is over and go on out there and be committed to do God's will in our lives, whatever that is. We need to pray. Get God's direction. We need to submit to the direction that He's leading us tonight. Yeah. But nothing is accomplished until you get up and get busy for God and you take action for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's when we start seeing things happen. That's when you'll start seeing accomplishments in your life. God's plan is not going to be finished until it's started. So God has plans for you. My question to you tonight is she finds a song of invitation is this. Are you willing to be committed? Very simple. Very simple message tonight. I told you I wouldn't be very lengthy. That's the question. Are you willing to be committed? If you'd like to pray that God will help you with a commitment tonight, well, you can come at this time, pray around God's altar, ask the Lord to touch you, heal you. Thank God for these three folks who are already coming. Will there be others tonight? And I'm glad that you know we've got people in this church who are very committed. And I thank God for you. And if nothing else, my dear friend, maybe the Lord would impress upon your heart to uh, if you're committed to God and you know you're committed to God, the Lord would impress upon your heart to take this message tonight of these scriptures that we've read and go and share that with somebody else. You see, that's how we spread the gospel. But by coming to the altar tonight and praying, it's in no way an admission that you're not committed. Perhaps you've got some other need in your life. Perhaps you have lost loved ones you desire to pray for tonight. Whatever the need is, tonight you could come. As this altar is just about full, you could come and bring your needs before the Lord. Ask God for strength. Ask God for grace. Ask God for help. Pray for your family. Whatever He impress upon your heart tonight, it's all over in God's hand. We're going to pray for these folks. If you need to come, you just mind God.
might be fulfilled. And notice here the Bible says, and all the disciples forsook him and fled. They all forsook him and fled. They turned and they ran and they all left Jesus there. If you read the accounts in the Gospels of his trial before the Sanhedrin, the high, the high court of the land that railroaded him all the way to the cross, which we know in the book of Acts, that was God's plan. Compatible is and see, man's going to do what man does because he has a sinful nature, but yet God's plan is still at work in all of this. So we see these. And they violated their own laws. Christ had nobody to speak in his favor at his trial before he went to the cross. He had no friends. They all forsook him and fled. But aren't you glad there's mercy and grace? Aren't you glad that, thank God, there's forgiveness when we come and, and uh, ask God to forgive us of our sins, that He, he does so? He, he, he shows us mercy and He restores our commission just like He did Peter and went on and used Peter in, the, in a mighty way and He could do that for you tonight. His mercy, the psalmist said, endureth forever. Amen? Give God some glory tonight.